Aye, Steve. You'll never guess what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> Boris Johnson declares war on Sunak as he quits Parliament. This is going to be the most ironic leaving do ever held. <laughs> if he turns up and has a drink, blah, blah, you can do it now. Why? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's big news, isn't it? He's, uh, he, instead of going through the process, which would be we actually find out what the committee says, mm. which votes. If this, this committee that is a majority Conservative committee, yes, the person chairing it's Labour, but no one seems to be mentioning the fact that if there's a majority that's voted to find him guilty of misleading Parliament, some Conservatives must have been the ones doing that too. Yeah, but lots of Conservatives uh, don't don't like Boris Johnson and they want to see oh, yeah. him out of the party. I mean, this is, this is what the left used to do. The right's doing it now. If you're not right enough, if you're not extreme enough, then it's time to attack the other side of ourselves. The left used to split itself apart and now I guess that fracture line's always been there in the right, but yeah. this, this jiggling is making it fall apart. Yeah. Um, but instead of just getting the result from the, uh, the committee, then seeing if there's a recommendation for suspension and then the MPs would have to vote for a recall and then the people of Uxbridge would have to vote in a by-election, he's just quit. Well, yeah, and we'd, have a, we'd probably have a general election before all that stuff actually happened. I mean, Dan, do you think his, his majority in Uxbridge is actually pretty slim? It's 5,000, I believe. Yeah. So do you think he's, uh, he's actually seen the writing on the wall? He's probably not going to keep his seat, and he's jumped, never mind before he's pushed by this, by this inquiry, he's jumped before uh, he's pushed by the electorate. I mean, you could say that he's jumped. I think that Kerry gave him a sharp push, and that counts as a jump. And I really <laughs> like the letter that Kerry wrote for him, that he handed in, uh, where he kicks over the bins and uh, starts, you know, slinging things at Rishi Sunak. It um, really is. I mean, he really has a go at Rishi Sunak and the, and the Tory party in, in that. He is. He's very angry. He's saying, well, what happened to all these things that we pledged in our 2019 manifesto? The thing I was voted in for. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think that he is definitely jumping. And what I find really funny about this is it's made the Lib Dems go, we've got a chance. It's like, that's really cute. That is funny. You've got to admit that's funny. But Steve, this is going to be a nightmare for, for Sunak, isn't it? I mean, right when he needs the, the party to sort of coalesce and, and give him every chance he can possibly get to possibly, you know, get over that finish line in front of uh, Starmer, uh, it's looking as if the, the Tory party is going to tear itself apart, with Boris not even constrained by any, any whip or anything. Now he's out of Parliament, he, he can be free to, to tear Sunak to pieces. Yeah, not only is this a bit of an inconvenience, it's the one thing where he needs to have no inconvenience. The only thing that Rishi Sunak will be able to claim is is that he's pulled the party together and kept things calm. Because it's not like we've got great economic news happening all the time. It's not like we've got great news about boats. Like his five uh, promises that then got downgraded to five priorities in the same way that I promised to do the dishes. And then it turns out I will prioritise doing the dishes, which means I'm not going to do them. Um, it, but it's all about trying to say, look, I can bring the party together. No, he can't. Look what's happened. Well, I think Rishi, I mean, Rishi, to, in fairness, considering the sort of mess that he inherited, has actually done it. He's yeah. been a steady hand on the tip. And uh, we've had some we've had some bad news, uh, you know, economically. We've had some bad news uh, regarding uh, immigration figures. But I mean, generally, he's been he's been a pretty, uh, you know, plausible uh, leader. I think Rishi has been a stabilising influence. Like, and you could tell that from the fact that he re-brought Suella Leaky Sue back in. Yeah. And everybody was like, what on earth are you doing? And it's like he brought her back in to keep that sort of more right section of the Conservatives on side. And I do wonder, I know there's this whole conspiracy that now that Boris has gone, he's going to try and make this like group of super Conservatives, uh, like the Avengers, and they're going to come back and try and take over like uh, the whole group. But I wonder whether losing sort of Boris and Nadine and losing his section, can Rishi keep it calm enough that actually the Conservatives become stronger as a whole? Now all sort of the shouty, weird, squawky ones have gone. So he's purged them from the party. Possibly. Yeah. But he hasn't purged them from uh, newspaper columns and, uh, and, and speaking to TV cameras. Watching, so you, be... <laughs> watching you read all those headlines, it was like when you're learning, like prepositions or verbs or something. You have to take the same <laughs> words and just put them in different <laughs> orders. It was awful.